Simplified Chaos, Episode 90. Life is beautiful and full of chaos. And it can get slightly out of hand if that shit's not tamed. We're here to share how to simplify the little things to help you lead a more intentional life. This is Simplified Chaos. Everybody, this is Simplify Chaos. I'm Jillian, one of your hosts, and I'm with my husband and co-host Nicholas. What's going on, folks? You're throwing me off here. I know. I know. We've got another great episode for you all this week. <laughs> I hope you all are doing wonderful. Jilly, what are we diving into? This is a reflection episode. Episode. About, I like to reflect about our weekend trip to Virginia. Your sister got married. She is officially a wife now. That's right. It's pretty magical. It's awesome. We had an amazing time. Can't wait to tell you all about it. But before we dive into that, as always, we'd like to show a little gratitude. So, Jilly, what are you grateful for this week? I am just grateful for uh, this weekend. Just good people and mountains. Oh, the mountains. Good people and mountains made me so, so freaking happy this weekend. Yeah. It was a it was a busy weekend, but it was all worth it. We're gonna dive into that as well. But yeah, mm-hmm. I I can't agree more. And mine's pretty similar. Mine was friends and family, just great friends and family. And we got to see a lot of those folks this weekend. And you know, it, it says I think there's something special when people are willing to to take a little drive for your wedding and and take a two and a half hour drive to somewhere and spend the night and really kind of get to know the area. And that's what happened with our wedding and. You know, the same thing with your sister's wedding and even with the whole uh, pandemic going on. So it was just great to see so many folks get there and everyone just having a good time. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful for the party that your sister and our brother-in-law threw this past weekend. And it was just so great to, to see everybody. So same here. Wait. I second that. You know, it's kind of funny that you said it was a busy weekend because I I don't know what it was, but it was a busy weekend, but it felt slow at the same time. And I wonder if it's because the atmosphere where we were, like just being outdoors Mm -hmm. and the mountains just seemed to slow everything down, even amongst the chaos of like getting everything together and cleaning up and preparing. Like it's it's just kind of funny how it was busy, but it felt slow at the same time. I don't know. I think that's a pretty good observation because I felt the same way. Like the, the days were long, even though we were busy, basically from the time we woke up. Actually, it was pretty chill when we woke up. We would get go downstairs and have our coffee. We had a ton of breakfast quiche that lasted throughout the weekend. And then it was it was time to get to work on Thursday. Well, Thursday we drove in. So when we got there at one o'clock, it was time to get to work and set up the venue. And then Friday, basically after we ate, it was time to get to work. It was time to do makeup. It was time to get the venue final preparations. It was time to mix the gold rush you know, all that good stuff, all the, the, the last minute preparations. So yeah, there was a lot to do, but the time did go by rather slow, which is a good thing when you get away. Yeah. So where you want to, where you want to start this conversation, Jilly? Okay. So I do have a little, um, something I want to throw at you a little bit later, but first oh, I just wanted to keep it, it raw and just kind of dive into like what, just what we... Our aha moments or what we thought about this weekend. Yeah. I know on the drive home, I kind of asked you this question and we kind of spitballed back and forth. Um, and I know the one thing you said was just kind of recognizing how my mom is the glue of this family. She is. Yeah. I mean, she, I know she probably worried a lot about the wedding and wanted to make sure that everything <laughs> was perfect and, you know, didn't really get sleep until the day after the, the wedding was over, but I mean, she was on top of everything. You know, she she wanted everything to be great for her, you know her daughter and and Mark, and just from the time she got there, and you know she got there a day before us, but you know just was doing everything to make sure that the stress was taken off of Randy's shoulders, and you know she she kind of absorbed all of that. You know she helped out with the rehearsal dinner. They had a nice little taco bar uh, that they did. So 
not only did she help out with that, but uh, Mark's dad did some grilling and, and made some banging ass shrimp mm-hmm. for the for the tacos, and then really good cod. I mean, and then he made his own bang bang sauce or whatever. It was the the rehearsal dinner was great. The dinner at the wedding was amazing. That but, smoked meat, yeah, so flipping good. But your mom was there like every step of the way. Didn't complain. Just you know, made sure things got done and. And even she stayed an extra day when that was she originally planned. So she stayed through Sunday and you know, thankfully she did because she did so much to help us prepare to leave. I mean, we had a house on the property that we were staying in that we had to clean up. We had the venue that we had to clean up and, and she was there and, and did it all. So yeah, uh, MVP, unsung hero, whatever you want to call it. She, uh, she's definitely that. Holy cow. And she just makes me want to strive to be that mom every day, just to think of the little things and to be one step ahead to just make the, the people that, you know, you care about feel extra special and know that you're there to be a support and mom showed such fucking support just yeah. making sure all those little tiny details the things that usually i look i don't look for or i, I don't like the tedious things but <laughs> she made sure all that shit was in line and i have a feeling like I, I say now like mom like don't worry about it don't worry about it but i have a feeling if i step into a mom role like if it was my daughter like if lucille's getting married sure i would probably be doing the same fucking thing oh you did you would, and it just doubt. makes me want to be that because i saw how mom just she, she was just a fucking rock star. And I want to be that mom that d- goes the extra mile, the extra step to help, to clean, to prepare, to make her day feel special. I mean, every day special, but it just seeing those traits in my mom just really shine this weekend in full force. It just, it makes me strive just to be like her. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and just to kind of piggyback on that. And, and you know, when, when push comes to shove, I should. I feel like this weekend really showed that we're all there for each other. You know, not only you know your mom was the rock star, but you had so many people who were helping out and making sure everything was great. Uh, you know, your friend Courtney, and then just you know the family itself uh, doing little odds and ends, and always asking, "Hey, what can I help out with?" So, you know, I, I, I that was my other. I have another observation after this, but that was another one that I just noticed. It's just like everyone pulling together, whether whether it was setting up chairs for the the ceremony or, or taking stuff down. Like everyone was there for each other to, to make sure that this weekend went off without a, a hitch. Did you want to share your other observation? Yeah. 2020 is not all bad. That is a fantastic observation. It really is. You know, you come to think of it, and, and I'm thinking of just... A lot of things that happened, not just the, the, the wedding, but I'm looking back at, at Mark's bachelor party and us leaving an hour late and that really allowing our afternoon to be great because we were in the middle of the remnants of Hurricane, uh, was it Sandy or Sally? I don't know, whatever the hell one is. I think it was Sally. And when we got to the shooting range, which was one of the things that we did, the rain let up. And we were able to go out there and have a great time and not get soaked. We had outdoor seating at the brewery, which it sprinkled a little bit, but not enough to to really cause any problems. And then we camped overnight and the weather was just gorgeous. The sky cleared. You could see all the stars and stuff in the sky. So there was that. There was uh, your friend's wedding in August that we went to in the middle of August. It's usually like 95 degrees here, 80, 90% humidity. It was 72 degrees in overcast that day. It was another, you know, beautiful day, beautiful ceremony without, went off without a hitch. And then for your sister's wedding, the same thing. We had some rain the night before, but it was cloudy in the morning. And then all of a sudden, like noon comes around and the, the clouds clear, the, the grass dries, and the weather was just unbelievable for the rest of the weekend. And just made for a really great ceremony. You can see the mountains in the backdrop. And, you know, just thinking we get so much negative stuff that's going on this year. It's like, you know, oh, I can't wait for 2020 to be over. You know, 2020 this and that. 2020 is, there's a lot of great stuff happening. And and we don't talk about it. And 2020 has been an adjustment for us. But it hasn't been bad it's there's actually been a lot of good things that have happened and uh i just want to recognize that and and you know I, i'm sure if you folks 
take a look back and, and see some of the things that some of the good things that happened. Maybe we can change our whole mindset about this year and, and the pandemic and the social distancing and all that stuff and and just really be grateful for what we do have. I think this has been the most mindful year ever. It really has. Because of the situation, it just ha- it put it put our life into a tweak mode where COVID tweaked a lot of things. It tweaked our daily habits, the way we go to work, where we work, how yeah. we eat. Like if you think of all of the small little tweaks that we had to to do, it makes us more mindful about you know our lives and what's important to us because we had to and adjust. And who's important to us. For sure. So I I have to second that. Um, I think at first I always said, you know, I distant learning. I really enjoy distant teaching. And yeah. I always say that and I'm like, you know, but it sucks about the deaths, you know, because I am sorry about that. But at the same time, I find that I got to stop just erasing that part and just think this year has been phenomenal. Yeah. You know, I, I can't control anything else, but we can control our lives we can and control, what we do. We can only control what's in our control. And it has been fantastic. We've tweaked the way we vacation. We vacation mm-hmm. locally, and we've discovered. And I, I am a true believer in that. Every decision has a purpose, or you could say everything has a reason. Right. And I truly believe this year has forced us to visit places that are nearby and closer, because we know we want to move, and we have been able to explore tons of local gems. Yeah to get more practice on where do we see ourselves in the future? What feels like home for us? What do we truly value about these experiences we're making? Mm -hmm. Like that is my reflection about this is that if anything, it's getting us just. um, It's helping us build our list. Yeah. And I hope it's not going to be a long list. I really want a short list of places that we're enjoying, but yeah, it's, we're really getting the vibes of different places that are nearby and I'm really enjoying 2020 as well yeah no it's been an amazing year so any other any observations from you there jilly that Uh, we haven't covered yet i think this trip really just confirmed my desire to be near the mountains yeah um 100 like i said this weekend just there was a sense of calm and peace and stillness that i i need right now in my life Mm -hmm. not that we don't get it but i think our environment is very congested, um, crowded, and not that I don't like people, but I'm I'm really searching more for a slower paced environment. Yeah, well, living I on the think, East Coast is very difficult, especially uh, in the area we live in, the Baltimore DC metro yeah. area. It is just fast paced, fast paced, fast paced. But luckily. You know, we are within a couple hours driving distance of some places that just slow the F down. Yeah, and right now, I think the next season of life is definitely to pursue that and to surround ourselves with that, but not too far because there was something else that was very clear to me as I was reflecting is that family and friends are fucking important. They're everything. And I know in the before we had Lucille, we talked about moving to the West Coast because the West Coast is just beautiful Mm -hmm. and you know you get the same kind of feeling out there of just slowing down and nature and we can still get that feeling on the east coast and not be that super far from family and friends because i'm realizing a lot of things that i was grateful for this weekend had to do with people and people are important to me and i choose people over the west coast i do i want to be close to them but i still want to have that that mountain feel that more nature space and stillness and that is totally doable. It is. It absolutely is. And we've had some friends that have moved outside of the state, but you know, not so far that it's it's still very easy to to meet up with them. You know, they live just across the PA line. Um, we've had some other friends, you know, move out to like Frederick or areas and stuff like that. So like, we still we're gonna hang out with the people we want to hang out with, and we will you know do an hour or two drive to to do that. And, you know, the nice thing is, is, you know, most people are like, hey, if you want to stay the night, you can stay the night or whatever. It's just it's we have that openness with our friends and it makes those decisions for us, uh, you know, a lot easier for, you know, wanting to extend out and find a new place to to settle in. And Tanya said something that really resonated with me. Tanya is my stepmom and, you know, they are going to be moving in the future and we were kind of helping them make a list of like what 
what they want in the next home or, you know, um, just kind of helping them narrow down to get some clarity of where they see themselves next because it's definitely not in Arizona. And she said, to me, it's more about like, I know she said, we're not going to be close to you guys. We're going to be on the West Coast. But she did say, but they are going to be near her side of the family, which is great. So they're still going to be near family. But she said, as long as we have quality time together, that's what's most important. Yeah. So it, it may not be quantity. And I think that we even had a discussion about that in an episode, just how we are all about quality. And I, I think that can relate to wherever we move. Like we may not be 20 minutes away. We may be an hour, but it's all about getting that quality time with friends yeah. and family versus yeah. quantity. No, absolutely. And, and, it's funny, I filled out a profile the other day and it said, you know, what is one of the greatest life lessons you've ever learned? And I said, quality over quantity. I mean, it's it's absolutely true. I you know, Just having that time with folks and being, and, and again, it kind of goes back to this weekend where we were able to slow down and have quality time and, and, and it didn't feel like it was something that was over in the snap of a finger. It, it really... I really felt like I got to connect with a lot of folks, even though you know we didn't see them throughout the entire weekend. But just that couple hours that they were at the the wedding, it was just like really I get to to hang out with these folks and have interesting conversations with them and catch up with some people that I hadn't seen in a while. So you know I, I definitely agree with that. I mean there's there's no question quality is is extremely important in our lives. And I I wrote this because I thought it was kind of funny. I wrote fire pits are the tits. Fire pits are the tits. Man, it just makes me, whatever space we have, I know eventually down the line, I was like, just want a big ass fire pit to sit around because yeah. that was just so fucking cool to do that. You're just, probably saying that too because we're smelling the fire that's yeah. outside in our patio right now. Man, that smell is just, it's, it's my jam right now. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's we, it just turned fall, so it is a very fall thing for I uh, know. to happen. So yeah, we're we're definitely. We enjoyed a lot of fire pit action last week uh, as we were preparing for the the wedding. Get you know, we we had a night where we squeezed 130 lemons, and then <laughs> lemon when we were done, party. we were like, "Let's go out and the you know enjoy the the evening." So we've had some really crisp uh, evenings here lately. The perfect weather for fire oh pits. So yeah, uh, a big fire pit is definitely in our future. Okay, and I had one last reflection. Um, when we got back Sunday. And then I had to start work Monday. I realize now that I have to create space after vacations because I felt like I was just scrambling on Monday. <laughs> I I realize I need a, a recalibration day. I yeah. need at least 10 hours after vacation just to like ease into the work week and not just get right into it because I felt like it just took me a while to adjust. So um, from now on, when we plan trips, I'm going to create space base at the end of our trip which kind of sounds weird like why would you waste a day like if you're not on vacation but to me that would be worth so much of my sanity and like mental clutter and the chaos that was like going on in the house and in my head I felt like I would have been a little bit happier if I would have had time to like reset the Mm -hmm. house you know reset my mind and uh so I'm gonna take that into consideration the next time we do a trip just to make sure that there's plenty of space after the fact so that way we can have time to reflect and just feel more at ease in our home to like start the work week (laughs) i'll second that too because you know we were obviously off on thursday and friday i came into work monday morning with 80 some emails that i had to go through (laughs) and then monday mornings i always have a two-hour meeting from 10 until noon so it was trying to get through the emails, building my task list off those emails, and then jumping into a meeting. And then I had just other meetings lined up throughout the day. So, like, it was just not the optimal way to go back to work. And, you know, even if I have to go through emails on a Sunday just to, to get myself caught up so that Mondays don't suck as much, mm-hmm. I'm willing to, to do that. But I agree with you. We, we do need to build some time in for us to, to kind of get back on track before we, we start our work weekend so that it's a little less overwhelming. Oh, I as soon as I like journaled, like wrote down my goals and I set my intentions, I felt so much better. But to me, I didn't have time to do that on Sunday. Yeah. So I had to do that on Monday. I'm like, if I would have well, it throws your in, whole week off. Yeah. So just to me, I just really appreciate the space and time to just kind of like decompress. And I think it's totally worth taking into control and just taking a half day or a day mm-hmm. to do that. And, you know, not bitching about like, oh my God, today sucks because 
it's just so much to catch up on and grade and do this. I'm like, I can't complain about it. I just got to be more mindful about it and plan for the future. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So is this the uh, the thing you're going to throw at me here? Yeah, it's not like brutal, but um, oh, man. there were eight questions to ask yourself on every trip that I got from a website, Thrive Global. And this is not the resource. Oh, I know Thrive Global. Yeah. That's a Huffington, Ariana Huffington site. Oh, cool. So. Yeah. I only have three just because eight questions would probably take us a long time. I'm but long-winded. I, I thought it would be fun to, uh, I think their answers would speak loudly about what we value and, you know, just what where we see us going in the future. I'll try not to joke about this. You're good. No, it's really easy. Okay. I think it is. Um, or they're simple, I should say. They might be not so easy. Um, oh, man. Number one, what about this trip am I most thankful for? I think I said it at the very top, and it's... The family and friends that we got to hang out with and like I said just seeing everybody in action who helped out who were part of this big day and you know just seeing Randy and Mark happy and and everybody else happy and celebrating you know their their marriage and you know it was just yeah I I would say that simply that so what I'm hearing is family friends quality time yeah just yeah, it's just yeah. funny to hear how our values are constantly being brought up, and it's nice reflecting over this because they can be changed or tweaked, and it's nice knowing that what we're doing is definitely aligned to like what we want out of life. Yeah. And I I had the same things, and I had just the the nature, the outdoor space oh, yeah, was the nature just is definitely yes. Um, okay. And seeing Lucille in action. <laughs> oh my goodness, she was she was a pistol this weekend. But yeah. Okay, number two. Uh, Which rituals or activities did you experience that could benefit in your daily life? I really liked, and it kind of just goes back to what we were talking about, is the fire pit was just a really cool part of the evening. And I can see us making that a part of, you know, every weekend. Maybe not every night over the weekend, but at least having one night where we dedicate to the fire pit and whether it's just us as a family or if we want to invite friends over and have a chill night like i really love that ritual the the two mm-hmm. nights that we did that there and i feel like we're making it a part of our life now that the weather is turning and it's becoming fall and we have a big pile of wood now in the backyard thanks to our brother-in-law <laughs> so yeah that, i think that was my ritual that i would say that i'd like to continue moving forward which we can totally do yeah I had fires, um, just outdoor time, the exploration, like just like going to new places mm-hmm. and trails. And then I, I wrote the stillness, like that atmosphere of just ease and yeah. peace was just, was really, really nice. 100% agree with that. So uh, we're striving for that and we're working towards that. Definitely. <laughs> we're on the same page too, which is a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Number three, what do you do at home? that you didn't miss while you were away? What do I do at home that I didn't miss while we were away? Mm-hmm. Whew. Work? <laughs> <laughs> I second no, that. that that's, so, no, I, I get what you're saying. I mean... No, but I think that's important, too, to say. Yeah, I mean, I think it was nice not doing the the cleaning of the house or having any of those responsibilities for the weekend obviously we did that before we left it and we left the house in in good condition uh it's always good to get away from that kind of stuff but you know as far as like i feel like you know not a lot changed in my in my daily routine when we were there obviously we were more focused on you know the wedding but uh or watching lucille just depending on the situation but yeah i mean I wouldn't say that there's anything besides the uh, the mundane tasks that we have to do around here is what I missed. I, I second that. Like, it was nice. I feel like co-living is great. But when you have another family living in the same house, there is more cleaning. There is more picking yeah. up. Yeah. And that's one thing that I did not miss. It was really nice not <laughs> having to do cleaning and picking yeah. up and you know, just worrying about us or just helping out with the family. And it was like less just because there was more people. Yeah, I mean, we had to worry about our room, which we kept pretty nice. And we just had to worry about cleaning up after ourselves after we ate. And that was really it for the weekend. Yeah, I agree. Um, (laughs) You're probably going to laugh at this. I wrote, (laughs) so I saw the bright side of this. I actually did not miss, so the coffee maker at 
the place we stayed at. This house was beautiful. Their coffee maker was so slow. Like it took 45 Literally minutes just 45 to brew minutes. a full pot. 12, at, 12 uh, cups. And at first I was like, oh man, like this kind of sucks. Like I have to sit and wait, but actually it was kind of nice because it forced me to sit down on the couch and I was able to just to chat and talk with family. And I didn't mind the slowness of coffee brewing. I think it just makes you appreciate Would it you more. Would you have appreciated having that cup of coffee while chatting with your family? I still had it afterwards, know, but, but it was just, you know, I didn't hate, like it just having things do the work slower was okay. Fair I just enough. <laughs> yeah. I uh, want my coffee when I want my coffee, but I will not settle for a Keurig. That is just me. Okay. Here. No, I'll never not. I don't want a Keurig. It tastes like plastic. Yeah. No Keurig. Um, something else that I didn't miss is our shower. Yeah. I want to put this out there that, and it makes me think of when I see pictures on Instagram of like really nice houses and bathrooms and kitchens. Our bathroom looks phenomenal. When you see a picture of it, you're like, wow. Like, I would say, wow. Like, it's beautiful to I look mean, at. We, we but the maintenance, it. we did. <laughs> Not really diving deep into, like, what the maintenance would be and taking care of it and making it pristine and keeping like that. But there is something to say now reflecting that I don't have to have my quote unquote dream shower. Like when we move and we decide to find a space, like the shower is not going to be like, Oh, it's a done deal. They don't have this and that it's like, because I'm finding that the more pristine and white it looks, Mm -hmm. the more fucking work it is to keep it that way. (laughs) Public service announcement here. (laughs) We've talked about this in your shower. Don't do white tile with black grout. It looks fantastic, but it is a pain in the dick to clean. It is painstaking because black grout likes to smear on white tile. So you have to like scrub and then you have to go behind and wipe. And sometimes you have to get like, if you're like me and are very uh, particular how things look. It's a good word. (laughs) Then yes, it takes... Two hours to clean that bitch. Yeah. Easily. I just, I just find that it was like a good re- revelation to like, you know, what are non-negotiables if we are looking for a new place. It's like the bathroom. I'm okay. Yeah. I can settle. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's the thing too. Like when we, uh, the whole goal I think is in five years or so is to find a piece of property and build and be able to have that experience of building our own house the way we want it. I want a nice looking bathroom, but I know what not to do now. (laughs) Holy crap. I guess it just makes me look at bathrooms in a whole different light. Like I'm like, I look at like the one set shower, you know, where it's just like all one piece and there's no Mm -hmm. tiling. I'm like, I bet this is easy as shit to clean. I'm like, why didn't we go with that? (laughs) Hey, you live, you learn. You do. That's right. All right, and that was it. Good stuff. Yeah. That was a fun little exercise. I thought so. Thanks for uh, always keeping me on my feet here on the Simplified Chaos Podcast. <laughs> Jeez. So You're welcome. You, do you have any resources for our listeners today, Jilly? I do. All right. So I found a blog post. by It's called um, coffeewithsummer.com, and it was about taking time to reflect. That and sounds like something from Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, because summer was in Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. Yeah. Coffee with summer. (laughs) Sorry. Continue. (laughs) Okay. Nowadays, we're not handed the time to reflect anymore, so it's important that we create those moments on our own. I have always been someone who enjoys thinking, and because of that, I would love to see my generation slow down and get lost in thought sometimes. We all have incredible minds, and I think that not taking the time to reflect on life can almost be dangerous. Mm -hmm. We get so caught up in the hustle and bustle that we end up becoming numb to pausing and deep thinking, but it doesn't have to be this way. So here are four reasons why you need to take time to reflect. Number one, reflection helps give us proper perspective. With how busy life can get in today's day and age, it's easy for us to become overwhelmed and worked up. Whether we become overwhelmed with huge life circumstances or the smallest mistake, When we take time to step back and reflect, we can see the bigger picture more clearly. We can get a hold of ourselves and gain perspective, and we can then refocus appropriately. Number two, reflection lets you learn from your past mistakes. None of us lead perfect lives, and sometimes we make mistakes along the way. 
And that's okay because it happens. Instead of letting these mistakes get us down or hinder us from reaching our potential, reflect on them. Figure out where you went wrong, like our bathroom, and think of (laughs) ways you can fix that and avoid those mistakes from happening again. Number three, reflection allows you to get great ideas. Some of the most great ideas have come from deep times of reflection on life and all it brings. Some ideas are sparked from passions that I have in my heart, and other ideas are ignited from pain and suffering. When you set aside time to reflect, you can unlock some of your greatest ideas that are currently hiding away. And number four, reflections let you lend a hand to others. Reflection helps you see your past, your past self when you need to the most, and that's a beautiful thing. When you think about what's going on around you, you can often be brought to the attention of the needs of those you're around on a regular basis. This gives you the opportunity to find ways you can help assist them, even if it's just by offering them a pep talk or a coffee date. You'll become more widely aware of those in need when you pause and reflect. Nice stuff, Summer. Right? Yeah, that's really good. Yes, I thought so. (laughs) And how about that quote of the day there, Jilly? Your quote of the day is by Dr. Paul T.P. Wong. T.P. You can't go wrong with this quote. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> All right, here's the quote. Time spent in self-reflection is never wasted. It is an intimate date with yourself. Love it. We all, oh, I was about to do my, oh, I just, I was going to say something. I was like, actually, that sounds like your take action challenge. Yeah. Take some time to have an intimate date with yourself. I like it. And reflect. You have to. As often as possible, not just with big trips. <laughs> yeah, no. I would suggest doing it, if not daily, at least weekly. Set some time aside. I should start putting that in my goal setting planner, like time for reflection. I think that would be really yeah. helpful and help make me more mindful. I agree. I might do the same thing. Copycat. Hey. It's okay. I love you. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, folks. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode. As always, if you like this episode, please do us a favor and help us spread the message. You can do this by writing a review or simply by sharing this episode with a friend. And remember, sharing sparks a conversation. Conversation leads to action. And action is how we're able to live a happy and intentional as hell lifestyle. We want to thank you all for listening today. And we will see you again next week. See you later, everyone.